These are pallets. They're wooden, usually found by the side of the road, and often free. And countless YouTubers have taken these discarded relics and transformed them into glorious pieces of furniture, getting rich in the process. Okay, well, maybe not rich, but still, they seem like they sell them for a lot of money. <coughs> but are pallet wood projects just a get-rich-quick scheme or a legitimate business opportunity? A fleeting fad or a foundational f... f I, I can't think of anything else that starts with an F. Furniture? Venture? Whatever. Either way, today I'm going to attempt to find out and test another material that I think might actually be better and cheaper than pallet wood. Today's video is sponsored by Ethos. People don't like to think about life insurance for obvious reasons, but ignoring it doesn't help and actually hurts because the truth is, according to Investopedia, each year you wait as you get older, life insurance rates can increase by eight to 10%. That's why I got it and everybody should get it at their youngest. And that is literally always going to be right now, unless you got a time machine. Now we can't all get a DeLorean, but we can all use Ethos. And they've made the entire process way simpler, faster, and more affordable to the point where you can get a quote in seconds and apply for life insurance in just minutes online without any medical exams. You just need to answer a few health questions. And most people are able to get coverage the same day. Plus, rates are obviously going to depend on your age and what you're looking for, but you might be shocked by how affordable a policy can be. Stop putting it off. I did it so that I can make sure I was protecting the people most important to me. Take a minute, go to Ethos and get a free quote so you can get the ball rolling. All right, thanks Ethos. If you've seen my videos in the past, then when you saw this one pop up, you probably wondered, why the heck is Chris building pallet furniture? And I'll tell you in a second. But if this is the first time you've ever clicked on one of my videos, hi, I'm Chris, and I don't normally make pallet furniture. In fact, I've never made pallet furniture. Normally I build this kind of stuff. So now that you know all that about me, and we're all on the same page, everybody might be wondering, why the heck is Chris building pallet furniture? And long story short, I bought some new equipment. Equipment often comes on pallets, and it kind of seemed wasteful to not do something with them. Plus other people seem to enjoy it, so I guess I just wanted to see what the fuss was about. And while I'm pretty good at building regular furniture, I have to admit that at this point, I basically have no idea what I'm doing. That said, I did figure out one thing pretty quickly. And that was that there was no way I was gonna be able to get a lot of long pieces from my pallets. So I needed to think of a design that would factor that in. So going in, I knew that I wanted to do a big round coffee table but most of my pieces are probably gonna end up about 16 inches long. So instead what I'm gonna do is make four pie slices, that way I can make a bigger top out of smaller pieces. So with the pressure of keeping my pieces long off of my mind, I continued breaking things down, still trying to salvage long boards where I could, but not having to. And this definitely sped things up for me. So I'm treating this thing like a buffalo, saving every part possible. I even saved a bunch of nails, even though I'm like 99% sure I'm never gonna use them. And after everything was said and done, here's what I ended up with. The next thing I need to do is use my joiner to make one flat edge on each board. And I feel like of all the tools in the workshop, the joiner is probably the least understood. And I think that's because it's just kind of hard to see what's going on. But basically the way that it works is you've got an in-feed bed, a spinning blade, and an out-feed bed. These two are the exact same height, and this one is slightly lower. So you can feed in a rough or warped piece of wood, and it'll put a flat face on it. That's way oversimplified, but those are the basics. Okay, so my slats right now vary in thickness, anywhere from about 5 eighths of an inch to about 3 eighths of an inch which either way is gonna make for a very thin and pretty much useless tabletop. So something else that I noticed was that most of the tops I saw were made either one of two ways. So I don't really wanna do a butcher block because I feel like that gets rid of the palette aesthetic, if that's such a thing, which means to make it useful, I need to kind of put pieces together like this. So I almost need to build two tops. 
I'm kind of worried that maybe I don't have enough pieces. I think I'm gonna start working my way through and hope that I have enough stuff. Um, so I guess just wish me luck. Now, something that I noticed while I was looking around on YouTube is that a lot of Palette Wood videos mention money in their titles. And that made me wonder, are Palette Wood projects a get-rich-quick scheme? Nah, but for real. You know what I mean. Is the allure that you find something that's one person's trash and you turn it into a $1,200 desk or a, I don't know, a $1,360 desk? Well, I'm gonna find out. And I'm gonna test out another theory. So we all know that if you're building stuff from pallet wood, your materials are free. See, but could pallet wood actually be costing you money? Well, here's how I'm gonna find that out. So we all also know that the cheapest wood you can use for furniture is poplar. So I'm gonna order some and build a second version of this table keeping track of all of the time and all the money that goes into each piece. And then I'm gonna sell both of them. That way we can see how it all shakes out in the end. Now, all that said, if I don't actually get this thing built, I'm not gonna have anything to compare. So what I was just doing was making all of my strips where I have two pieces glued together. And my goal in doing all of that was to leave them as big as I could in every dimension. Then from there, I could organize the pieces so that I have the least amount of waste possible. And to do that, I tried nesting the pieces together, kind of like how you can see in this animation. And to be honest, as woodworking goes, this was actually very simple, but as organization goes, just a little bit more complex. Just trying to make sure that I ended up with exactly eight of every piece. Then to glue them into slices, I used this template that I had left over from a side table that I built about a year ago, which had a shelf that was also slice shaped. And to make sure that these things come out as flat as possible, I used some 2x4s as calls to force them flat while the glue was drying. Here, I'm making sure that each slice is perfectly flat and that all four are the exact same thickness. And honestly, at this point, things are going great. Like, I think that this thing is turning out absolutely fantastic. So I just finished getting these panels all cleaned up and now these things are barely over a half of an inch thick, which I can't leave it this way. I think what I'm gonna do is, you can see I've got a lot of wood behind me here, but intermix in there are a lot of kind of small thin pieces that probably never gonna end up in a piece of furniture. So I think I'm gonna find the thinnest material that I have in there and use that to maybe do like some kind of under layer or something. So it's gonna be kind of goofy, it's gonna be I don't know, a cousin to the mullet, I guess, but in the furniture realm. Let's just cut to sometime tomorrow when I've got that done. So here's an unfortunate story. Literally the day after I made those walnut scrap underlayer pieces and glued them on, I got up, got in my truck to head to work, like I do every day, and on my way, what do I see? Two pallets just sitting by the side of the road. At first I just drove right by them and laughed, but then I thought, well, I don't know, maybe I can use them for something. So I looped back around and picked them up. So I guess not really unfortunate, just kind of bad timing, but it does have me a little worried. Like what if by building this pallet project, I've unknowingly set some sort of cosmic wheel in motion and now I'm turning into a pallet guy. Kind of like that movie, The Santa Claus, where the dude from Home Improvement kills Santa and then becomes him. I never saw it, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's about. And now I'm gonna like start finding pallets everywhere I go. Out to dinner, at the movies, in bed. I'll keep you guys updated. But getting back to this one, I think it's time that we started talking about money. So for the pallet table, I'm just gonna call the wood zero dollars. Yeah, there's some walnut in there, but I wanna give this thing every shot to be the winner of this little competition. So we're just gonna assume that all of the materials were free. For the poplar version, I looked around and it seems like poplar goes for anywhere from around 350 to $6 per board foot. So I'm gonna go with 550 to keep things towards the high side. And I'm sure some people will think that number's too high and some will think that it's too low. 
And that's because wood fluctuates in price from day to day, and what it costs in one part of the world isn't the same as what it costs in another. So I actually ordered mine online from a place that I like to use called Woodworker Source. I'll throw a link for them in the description. But I ordered five pieces that were 36 inches long, and another piece 72 inches. And all of them are seven inches wide and an inch and a half thick, which comes out to 21 board feet. And at 550 per board foot, that's $115.50. And if you're wondering what a board foot is, it's the archaic system that lumber yards like to use to sell wood. Okay, so that's where we are money-wise. And the other thing that we need to keep track of is time. So really the only thing that I've done with the pallet table so far is create an oversized panel that I can cut into a circle-shaped top. And it's always hard for me to say how long something takes me because filming everything makes it way slower. But I would say that I've done about 15 hours of work up to this point. Now with the poplar table, to get to that exact same point, an oversized panel that I can cut into a circle, it only took about two hours. So here's where we are at this point in the build. And looking at this, you might be thinking that you know what the outcome is going to be, but I think you might be surprised by the conclusion. Okay, so here I'm in laying a couple of strips of walnut between the pallet slices. And there's two reasons that I'm doing this. First is to camouflage any of the areas where the slats in the top didn't quite line up. They came out pretty good, but it's not perfect. And this will kind of trick people's eye into making them look closer to perfect. And second, and I probably shouldn't admit this, but I kind of secretly want this one to go for more money than the poplar one. And if spending a little extra time to do things like this will help, I'm going to go for it. Then I'm going to use a circle cutting jig to trim the tops to their final size. And my original plan was to cut all the way through doing this, but I ended up just using it to establish a ledge and then use the template bit to finish everything off. And just like everything else we've done up to this point, the pallet one took a lot longer than the poplar one. Now, if I were a smarter guy, I'd probably just buy some hairpin legs at this point, slap them on, and call it a day. But I'm not a smarter guy. So I'm going to build some bases. And to make sure that everything's on an even playing field, I need to build two identical bases, other than materials. And this might sound like a weird thing to say, but I'm actually going to make them purposefully boring. Or maybe not boring, but standard? I can't think of a good word, but basically I want them to be something that people feel like they've seen some version of before. Familiar. Maybe that's the word. And here you can see what I came up with. Now, since I need to build eight identical legs, I'm going to start off by making myself a couple of templates out of MDF. So once my drawing is looking good, I'll use my Craig ACS to cut any straight lines that are possible. And then the rest I'm going to cut out with a bandsaw and then finalize the shape with sanding. For the pallet wood legs, I'm going to dig into one of those pallets that I found by the side of the road. And for these, I'm going to need some bigger chunks. And I should be able to get all four legs out of the six chunks that you see here. And again, just like before, same step on the poplar version was much faster. Now, you might have noticed that when I made those templates, I split them into two parts. And here's why. So this shot is mostly for the camera, but I start by using them to figure out the material that I'll use for my pieces. Then once I have that figured out, I need to make sure that each workpiece has one good flat edge that I can use for a reference to make the important cuts. Next, I'll use the top part of the template to set my table saw's fence so that I can cut my workpieces to match their width. Then I'll use the other piece of the template to set up my miter gauge so that I can cut the correct angle. 
and here it happened to be 20 degrees. But a lot of times these end up being these really weird angles that would be almost impossible to dial in, so it's good to be able to reference your blade. Then once I've done that, I'll actually glue my template pieces together and then use them to trace out my shapes again, only this time it actually matters. And that's so that I can figure out where I'm gonna cut dowels or dominoes. And then after everything's glued together, I'll reposition my templates on these lines to shape everything with a router. And with any luck by doing all of that, it'll give me eight identical legs so that I can sell these two tables on an even playing field. Now, speaking of selling these tables, as soon as I finished building them, I set up an auction page and made a post so that people could check them out and bid if they were interested. And I only left bidding open for three days, which might limit the final price, but what can I say, I got a video deadline. Which brings up an important point. I think any video where someone is telling you how much you can sell something for should probably be watched with a healthy dose of skepticism. And that's because what those people are selling, myself included, is really entertainment, not a table. Like, I'll be honest, if I knew that setting these pieces on fire at the end would skyrocket views, I would happily do it. Maybe. Now, that doesn't mean that the people making these videos are scam artists. I think it's totally possible to show the story in an honest and sincere way. But I do think it's really important to acknowledge the fact that some of us are in different situations. I personally would consider myself extremely lucky that I can drive traffic to my website by just making a post. And I don't say that to brag, but because I think not admitting that would be pretty disingenuous on my part. So the point is, I'm going to break down all of the costs and the profit, but I hope that people don't think of this as a how-to that's totally replicable. I think really the value is in how much the pieces sell for compared to one another rather than whatever they do sell for. Now, you might be thinking that an easy fix would be to just post them anonymously on Craigslist or something, but I'm not really looking to get stabbed in a parking lot behind a McDonald's. So, yeah. Okay, next I'm gonna put this detail on the outside of the legs that we always call a thumbnail profile, and I actually have a whole video where we go into detail about this detail, along with a few other favorites. But I think that this one is particularly nice because it simultaneously gives you a nice crisp line and a round edge. And rounded edges are cool because sometimes they catch the light and do stuff like this. And actually I was curious, so I did a quick count. And of all the pieces that we sell plans for, we've used it on, it looks like eight of 15 pieces. So I guess I like it about 53% of the time. And if you wanna build any of those pieces, I'll throw a link in the description. But Anyway, after the legs were looking good, I took the bit out of this router and put it in this router so that I could round over the underside of the tabletops. And judging by the look on my face in this shot, it seems like I was disgusted by how much dust was on me. And I thought maybe a quick little stomp would get rid of it. And honestly, even if it had, I was just gonna get dusty all over again when I rounded over the underside of the pallet top. So what's the point? It's like, brushing your teeth right before you eat Oreos. For the most part, I would say that routing the pallet wood actually went pretty well. On the legs, there was only one of them that had a pretty big tear out kind of at a transition area. But I think I'm gonna be able to fix it by just flooding it with epoxy and then putting my templates back on and reshaping everything. And it should be hopefully pretty unnoticeable. On the top, there were a few more problems. Basically where each slice meets on the perimeter, there's some small problems, some medium-sized problems, and some big problems. Truck, hang on. Okay, so anyway, the way that I'm gonna fix them, on the bigger ones, I'm gonna use epoxy. On the smaller and medium-sized ones, I think I can use this stuff called hot melt, which I use a lot, and I always get a question every time I use it. It's basically the kind of stick that you would put into a hot glue gun, only it's black instead of clear. It's definitely not as hard as epoxy, but it's still plenty hard in small spots and especially on an edge like this. So I think I'm gonna be able to get everything taken care of. It's just gonna take a few hours, but it's to be expected. So I'm gonna get to work on that. All right, 
who's ready for some numbers. Last time we checked in, I was 17 hours into the pallet table and three hours into the poplar table. On the pallet table, I spent another 11 hours making the base and six hours sanding and finishing, which would bring the grand total to zero dollars and 34 hours. Then on the poplar table, I spent another eight hours making the base and four hours sanding and finishing, which gives us a total of $115.50 and 15 hours. So those are the inputs and now the output. The highest bid that I received on the pallet table was $755, which equates to being paid $22.20 per hour. Now on the poplar table, for that one, the winning bid was $750, so $5 less. But because it was so much faster to build, that comes out to being paid $42.33 per hour, which is actually pretty good. Now, you might have some thoughts right now, and I do too. I have two good reasons that you might consider building projects with pallet wood, and two reasons you might want to avoid it. The first reason against it is if you're doing it for the money, don't. Honestly, I'm skeptical that anybody is actually running a successful business making pallet furniture, unless they're also making content about it. So I did some half-assed research by asking ChatGPT, does anybody have a successful business or even a business selling pallet wood furniture? And it gave me a really generic answer about how there are businesses and entrepreneurs who have found success in creating and selling furniture made from pallet wood, yada, yada, yada. So I said, but actually though, can you show me their sites? And it said, specific examples of successful businesses in this niche were not readily available through my current search and suggested exploring platforms like Etsy. So I did. And I went with a top seller there who had 1,378 sales over five years. And I couldn't find an average sale price, so I just used the average list price of an item in their store, which was 290 bucks. And that would come out to about $80,000 per year. But remember, that's not profit, that's gross income. And I highly doubt that if you're building five and a half pallet projects per week, that you're finding your materials for free on the side of the road. Anyway, that's where I stopped my research, but from this glimpse, I would say that it's certainly possible to create a business selling pallet wood furniture, but it's probably not as straightforward as some people might make it seem. Okay, now the reasons that you should consider using pallets. I didn't think I was going to like building this project, but I did. Breaking down the pallets and finding the good pieces was almost meditative. And second, if this is your hobby and you enjoy upcycling trash into something valuable and you can then actually sell your creations to fund your hobby, that's a triple win. Okay, last but not least, the second reason you shouldn't. And I think this is the one that most people probably overlook. So I think that the real allure of pallet wood is that if you're fairly new to woodworking, it's a free material, so if you mess up, there's no financial loss. But here's the catch. My pallet table was far more challenging and far more flawed compared to the poplar table. And for new woodworkers, the confidence boost that you would get from working with easier materials like poplar is invaluable. Honestly, spending 115 bucks for that confidence compared to the frustrations of pallet wood, I think it's a bargain. So, I guess if I had to boil this whole experiment down to its simplest terms, and to answer the original question, should you build things out of pallet wood? If you're doing it for the money, probably not. But if you're doing it for other reasons, yeah. So I got some good news. Okay. I gotta give you a new price. It's free. <laughs> that is good news. <laughs> See you in the next one.